Increasingly, I am asked to deliver really short, really to the point instructional videos to help people get their heads around small changes to systems or new platforms being brought in. Now, this is always challenging because strictly speaking, this is a communications piece. This isn't learning as such. However, there's a lot that we can deliver in this space if we have the right tools to allow us to work efficiently and effectively. Now, I've spent a lot of time trying to find the right tool for me to use when doing this, whether it's Camtasia or Snagit or any of the other screen recorders that are out there. But they all just sort of take a little bit too long, too many steps, too many different bits of software I need to move between or weird limitations that should or shouldn't be there or just things that don't allow me to work efficiently. Well, I found a new tool that I've started using and actually found really handy. It's called Guide and I'd like to show you it. So I first came across Guide in uh, my Refind feed, actually. It was an advert, which is quite unusual for me. I don't usually go in for clicking on them, um, but it promised just some really simple stuff. And the thing that really grabbed my attention was that it was AI in a way that would save you time. That was its stated purpose, to make creating this type of content quicker. Who am I to uh, pass up on saving some time? So I thought I'd have a little look, took a free trial, and was really impressed. Now, I should say, really impressed does not mean it's the perfect tool. There's no such thing. There's totally stuff I would change. But let's dive in and take a quick look. We'll start by taking a look at their website, then we'll take a look at the tool in action, and then I'll show you the result of using the tool for just a few minutes. Start by opening a web browser, and because I've already installed it, the extension for Guide is just over here, and it always gives me the option to go directly to their page and then their website. So, let's start with what I really don't like about this, um, because it looks great. Um, but I hate marketing claims like this. It helps your team create video documentation 11 times faster. 11 times faster than what? This is kind of really Apple-esque in what it's trying to do. This really gets on my nerves. There is no need to be pulling up random figures with no context. Instead, talk to me about how awesome your tool is rather than trying to give me out of context numbers without explaining where they come from. But let's move on from that and scroll down the page because from here we see you know, people are using the tool. Great. Uh, you know that I've always kind of felt that these things I, I get from a marketing perspective why they're there. But the fact that some other company uses it does not make it a great tool. Loads of companies still use Captivate 2000 and whatever, 2019 or whatever, doesn't make it a great authoring tool. Um, let's scroll down. Um, this I like. This really simply shows you the flow, activating the uh, the widget uh, or the extension rather. It then identifies what it calls the storyline. Um, these are the key points in what you're recording, the clicks basically, the action moments. It can personalize and create a uh, kind of bespoke AI generated voiceover. You can have some design controls. You can see here some of the things that you can do. I like the fact that these are present. So often in these kind of AI or semi-automated tools, you give up design control. And then you have the ability to share your newly created video to a lot of different places as well as just downloading it. This is really handy and we'll take another look at it as we dive into the creation process. I've opened a new web browser to get started and the first thing I'm going to do is come over here and go to the website where I want to start my recording. Now if I was using a web application or a bit of software in the browser I would just navigate to there before starting rather than to a website. But for this example I'm going to show you how to book tickets for the Learning Network Connect conference in November. First thing I want to do is come up to the extension, the little red G, click on that and it'll open up the Start Capture option. There's also a shortcut, Alt-Shift-R is what it defaults to. Um, just to bring this up, it doesn't start the recording straight away for you. Um, then all I need to do is make sure that Magic Capture is activated. That's what does all the, uh, the exciting work that really saves us time. And then just click Capture. It'll ask me 
what I'm capturing. So what kind of journey am I talking about? Uh, well, this is, I'm gonna call it a product how to, and then I'm gonna describe it. Uh, I'm gonna do uh, buying tickets for connect. There we go. Uh, and then I can select my language. Good list of languages, not brilliantly expansive, but for a new tool, I think it's a really good starting spread. Um, okay, let's get started. So this is now capturing. Um, you can tell because the stop option has appeared over the extension. So what I'm now gonna do from here is just follow the process. I'm gonna click on events. Scroll down the page, click on LN Connect 2023. Scroll down again, and as I am a member, I will click here to add one member ticket. And as I'm buying for a colleague, I will click on add one non-member ticket. I'll then click get tickets. And then I would, of course, fill out this form, but I'm going to stop there because I don't want to buy more tickets for an event I'm already attending. All I then need to do when I'm done with the process is come back up to the top, hit the stop button, and pretty much straight away, it will open up a new tab. What this is now doing is processing that video. And you can see here, the magic capture is identifying all the key moments in the video and figuring out how they should be described. You can see on screen here, it's working on writing a description. It's working on figuring out what each step of the journey is going to be. Um, most importantly, what it's doing is it's looking at the names of things that you clicked, like what it's named in the actual website. Now this does leave it open to a few issues that we will see in this video capture. Let's take a look. The first thing it's done is create a what's going on here. So in this guide, you will learn how to buy tickets for Connect in the learning network. So there are a couple of issues here. First of all, there's no space in the learning or between the and learning in the learning network. And generally when speaking something, you wouldn't put a hyphen there, you would just have three separate words. The good news is simple grammatical stuff like that. I can just open up, open this up, add in the space, add in the space there and delete the hyphen. and maybe change into with to make it sound a little more human. There we go, that's now changed. I can then come down and view every step. Here, it starts by telling me which site I went to, which the URL was, and then breaks down all the key action steps. You'll notice that it's also drawn squares, dimmed the screen and added arrows. Now, what it's gonna do here is read these lines out as voiceover. And the same issue that we saw in that first one exists in all of these. It's identified the name of the website based on the uh, based on the page names, which unfortunately is not in the best format for this job. But that's easy enough to fix. We just do that. Click out of there. The change has been made. I can now just come in and do that for every single one of these. So now that I've edited all of that, what I may want to do is add a voiceover. Now to do that, I can come up here to edit video and then choose how I want to add it. I can record it myself directly into the platform for each of these three steps. It will then time them appropriately for that voiceover or I can use the text to voice feature. Um, now I, since using this tool, have actually downgraded my account slightly, so I no longer have that. But in the end version of this, I'm gonna give you a version of this video with one of their auto-generated AI voiceovers. I personally found that it was very little extra work to just record my own voiceover in. That said, if you want to save a little bit more time, this could be a fantastic option. And the difference in monthly cost is actually not that big. So I would say when you sign up and you do your free trial, they actually give you 14 days of a full pro license. That includes the AI voice. Give it a go. See if it resonates with your audience. If it does, consider subscribing at that level because it can save you a little bit of time.
In my scenario, the audience I was working with did not particularly appreciate the AI voice. Now, I would say that this is a pretty good AI voiceover, but they just didn't like it. So instead, I used the inbuilt recorder, recorded it myself, and that solved the problem. It's great that they have both options on this platform. So often it's one or the other, or if you can upload your own voiceover, you have to record it somewhere else and then upload it. The ability to record directly in for each specific step so that it automatically then retimes it for you, absolutely fantastic. You'll notice here you can also make changes like background colors and the motion. How do you move from step to step? These are really nice little extras. You can also add whole new steps. Perhaps you want to add a setup piece or a bit at the end, whatever it might be. Lots of flexibility here. Either way, once you're happy with your video, you can simply come up to the top and click share. Now here you have loads of options. You can share your video directly with other people, either by as a link or as a GIF, or you can send them an email. There's also something called smart copy. Now this allows you to post this video directly into many platforms that support HTML or markup. You can see here a good variety of specific applications, but also just actual code that you can embed into websites, let's say. Same with the markup options down here. Now again, at the pro level, you have these track options. This allows you to share the video out to another platform, but have the metrics feedback to here. This can be really helpful if you don't have like a central location for this stuff. If it's not going to an LMS or an LXP, it means you're not losing out on that valuable, valuable data. And last but not least, you have what you might consider the classic export options. Now, there's something a little bit special in here that I really like. I can download the video as an MP4, great. I can download it as a GIF, awesome. But I can also download it as a document PDF or as slides. This allows me to create clustered content at no additional effort. I can have my video that I've just created, but it'll also summarize it into a PDF for me as a simple flat guide. This is a real game changer. And in my mind, the reason I love this tool, I can record a video, record the voiceover, export that video to an MP4, put it to the LMS and also include a simple PDF version of that content, giving users choice choice in the method of delivery that's appropriate for the scenario in which they're trying to learn. Finally, here you have embedding options, uh, both fixed and responsive. You can choose whether or not to optimize it for search, i.e. include things like the description and step titles in the metadata for the video. Really helpful if you are using something more generic or have a particularly good search system embedded in your LMS or LXP. But from here, uh, nine times out of 10, to be honest, I'm hitting the MP4 button and the download PDF button. Um, in this scenario, I'm just going to hit the PDF because I already have the video itself. Um, it's going to create that now. It's going to download it. Um, I do find, there we go, that it's usually pretty quick. Let's start before I look at the video, looking at this PDF. Let me just close that. So here it's literally embedded the video, which I really like. It again, just provides those options. Just because someone's downloaded the PDF doesn't mean they shouldn't have access to the video. It's linked to the URL that we need to go to. And then it's included all those steps and the instructions and the voiceover text that we saw before. Fantastic. Really nice, simple guide nothing more than it needs to be. Now, obviously, if you put some time into the um, the design element of this, you could make it look a lot nicer. But realistically, I would suggest that this is fine. Let's close this and let's take a look at the video. Discover how to navigate the learning network and register for the exciting Connect 2023 event with this step by step guide. Explore the exciting events available on the learning network platform by clicking on events. Join the Connect 2023 event and connect with professionals in your industry by clicking on LN Connect 2023. Secure your spot at the Connect 2023 event by increasing the ticket quantity for the member's early bird ticket. 
Complete your registration for Connect 2023 by clicking on Get Tickets. This guide walks you through the process of exploring events and joining the LN Connect 2023 event. So as I said before, this is not a perfect tool. There are things here that I wish were a little bit different. A good example might be some of the design choices around the PDF. I would like to be able to do a little more around company specific branding and I would like a simpler kind of one click way of getting rid of the guide branding from the uh, from the you see the powered by guide bit at the bottom some organizations may not like that but on the whole I think it's a really solid tool and the fact that there's a 14 day free trial for you to try it out really test it with your audience and then if it's useful but not like a total game changer there's a free use bracket, which allows you to create like 25 videos. So if you only need to create a few really quickly every now and then for comms pieces, fantastic. If you are creating them more often, and I'm thinking especially if you're sat in an L&D team that's bringing in a new platform, this could be perfect for you. Whether you use the uh, sort of early tier, which is what I'm using, or the pro tier, uh, which comes with the uh, AI voice stuff, you could really quickly build a library of simple, efficient guides, how to navigate the new platform, how to find this type of content, how to post a comment, how to log in for the first time, how to structure your profile, all those little things that you're going to need to guide your audience through. You could put all of them together in a day really good quality and have them exported out either to the platform itself, shared in emails, embedded in a web page, or potentially if you go pro with tracking data coming back to guide for you. So you can see exactly how impactful or at least how viewed and engaged with that content is. I'd love to hear what you think about Guide down in the comments, and if you'd like to try out that free trial, there is a link in the description of this episode. Now that link is an affiliate link, so if you do choose to buy it and you go through that link, there'll be a little bit of a kickback for the channel, which would be fantastic. It won't cost you any more, but just helps us out. Thanks very much for tuning into this video. I hope you found it useful or insightful. And whether you did or whether you didn't, please let me know down in the comments, especially if there's another tool you're using for stuff like this that you think I should check out.